The Battle of Singapore, also known as the Fall of Singapore, was fought in the Southeast Asian theater of the Second World War when the Empire of Japan invaded the British stronghold of Singapore. Singapore was the major British military base in Southeast Asia and nicknamed the Gibraltar of the East. The fighting in Singapore lasted from 8 to 15 February 1942. It resulted in the capture of Singapore by the Japanese and the largest surrender of British-led military personnel in history. About 85,000 British, Indian and Australian troops became prisoners of war, joining 50,000 taken by the Japanese in the earlier Malayan campaign. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill called the ignominious fall of Singapore to the Japanese the worst disaster and largest capitulation in British military history. Background Outbreak of war during 1940 and 1941 The Allies had imposed a trade embargo on Japan in response to its continued campaigns in China and its occupation of French Indochina, as Japan's oil reserves were rapidly depleted by ongoing military operations in China and industrial consumption in the latter half of 1941. The Japanese began preparing a military response to secure vital resources if diplomatic efforts to resolve the situation failed. As a part of this process, the Japanese planners determined a broad scheme of maneuver that incorporated simultaneous attacks on the British and the United States. This would see landings in Malaya and Hong Kong as part of a general move south to secure Singapore, which was connected to Malaya by the Johor-Singapore Causeway, and then an invasion of the oil-rich area of Borneo and Java in the Dutch East Indies. In addition, strikes would be made against the United States naval fleet at Pearl Harbor, as well as landings in the Philippines, and attacks on Guam, Wake Island and the Gilbert Islands. Following these attacks, a period of consolidation was planned, after which the Japanese planners intended to build up the defenses of the territory that had been captured by establishing a strong perimeter around it stretching from India-Burma frontier through to Wake Island, traversing through Malaya, the Dutch East Indies, New Guinea and New Britain, the Bismarck Archipelago, and the Marshall and Gilbert Islands. With this perimeter, it was intended to block Allied attempts to regain the lost territory and defeat their will to fight. Invasion of Malaya The Japanese 25th Army invaded from Indochina, moving into northern Malaya and Thailand by amphibious assault on 8 December 1941. This was virtually simultaneous with the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor which crippled the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Thailand initially resisted, but soon had to yield. The Japanese then proceeded overland across the Thai-Malayan border to attack Malaya. At this time, the Japanese began bombing strategic sites in Singapore. The Japanese 25th Army was resisted in northern Malaya by 3rd Corps of the British Indian Army. Although the 25th Army was outnumbered by Allied forces in Malaya and Singapore, Japanese commanders concentrated their forces. The Japanese were superior in close air support, armor coordination, tactics and experience, while conventional British military thinking characterized the Malayan jungles as impassable. The Japanese were repeatedly able to use it to their advantage to outflank hastily established defensive lines. Prior to the Battle of Singapore the most resistance was met at the Battle of MUAR, which involved the Australian 8th Division and the Indian 45th Brigade. At the start of the campaign the Allied forces had only 164 first-line aircraft on hand in Malaya and Singapore, and all the fighters were the obsolete Brewster F-2A Buffalo. These aircraft were operated by two Royal Australian Air Force, two Royal Air Force, and one Royal New Zealand Air Force Squadron. Major shortcomings included a slow rate of climb and the aircraft's fuel system which required the pilot to hand pump fuel if flying above 6,000 feet. In contrast, the Imperial Japanese Army Air Force was more numerous and better trained than the second-hand assortment of untrained pilots and inferior allied equipment remaining in Malaya, Borneo and Singapore. 
Their fighter aircraft, particularly the Zero, were superior to the Allied fighters, which helped the Japanese to gain air supremacy. Although outnumbered and outclassed, the Buffaloes were able to provide some resistance, with RAF pilots alone managing to shoot down at least 20 Japanese aircraft before the few that survived were withdrawn. The battleship HMS Prince of Wales, the battlecruiser HMS Repulse and four destroyers reached Malaya before the Japanese began their air assaults. This force was thought to be a deterrent to the Japanese. Their aircraft, however, sank the capital ships, leaving the east coast of the Malayan Peninsula exposed and allowing the Japanese to continue their amphibious landings. Japanese forces quickly isolated, surrounded, and forced the surrender of Indian units defending the coast. They advanced down the Malayan Peninsula overwhelming the defences, despite their numerical inferiority. The Japanese forces also used bicycle infantry and light tanks, allowing swift movement through the jungle. The Allies, however, having thought the terrain made them impractical, had no tanks, and only a few armoured vehicles, which put them at a severe disadvantage. Although more Allied units, including some from the Australian 8th Division, joined the campaign, the Japanese prevented the Allied forces from regrouping. They also overran cities and advanced towards Singapore. The city was an anchor for the operations of the American-British-Dutch-Australian Command, the first Allied Joint Command of the Second World War. Singapore controlled the main shipping channel between the Indian and the Pacific Oceans. An effective ambush was carried out by the 2.30th Battalion on the main road at the Jemisar River near Jemis on 14 January causing heavy Japanese casualties. At Bakri, from 18 to 22 January, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Anderson's 2.19th Battalion repeatedly fought through Japanese positions before running out of ammunition near Parrot. Su Long, Anderson's battalion was forced to leave behind about 110 Australian and 40 Indian wounded who were later massacred by the Japanese. For his leadership in the fighting withdrawal, Anderson was awarded the Victoria Cross. A determined counter-attack from Lieutenant Colonel John Parkins 5, 11th Sikh Regiment in the area of New York, near Kluang, on 25 January and a successful ambush around the Nithsdale estate by the 2, 18th Battalion on 26-27 January, bought valuable time and permitted Brigadier Harold Taylor's East Force, based on the 22nd Brigade, to withdraw from eastern Johor. On 31 January, the last Allied forces left Malaya and Allied engineers blew a hole in the causeway linking Johor and Singapore. Prelude during the weeks preceding the invasion, the Allied force suffered a number of both subdued and openly disruptive disagreements amongst its senior commanders, as well as pressure from the Australian Prime Minister, John Curtin. Lieutenant General Arthur Percival, commander of the garrison, had 85,000 soldiers, the equivalent, on paper at least, of just over four divisions. There were at least 70,000 frontline troops in 38 infantry battalions, 13 British, 6 Australian, 17 Indian, 2 Malayan, and 3 machine gun battalions. The newly arrived British 18th Infantry Division, under Major General Merton Beckwith Smith, was at full strength but lacked experience and appropriate training. Most of the other units were under strength, a few having been amalgamated due to heavy casualties. As a result of the mainland campaign, the local battalions had no experience and in some cases no training. Percival gave Major General Gordon Bennett two brigades from the Australian 8th Division responsibility for the western side of Singapore, including the prime invasion points in the northwest of the island. This was mostly mangrove swamp and jungle, broken by rivers and creeks. 
In the heart of the western area was Raftenga, Singapore's largest airfield at the time. The Australian 22nd Brigade, under Brigadier Harold Taylor, was assigned a 10 miles wide sector in the west, and the 27th Brigade, under Brigadier Duncan Maxwell, had responsibility for a 4,000 yard zone just west of the causeway. The infantry positions were reinforced by the recently arrived Australian II, 4th Machine Gun Battalion. Also under Bennett's command was the 44th Indian Infantry Brigade. The Indian Third Corps under Lieutenant General Sir Lewis Heath, including the Indian 11th Infantry Division under Major General B. W. Key with reinforcements from the 8th Indian Brigade, and the British 18th Division, was assigned the northeastern sector, known as the Northern Area. This included the naval base at Sembawang. The southern area, including the main urban areas in the southeast, was commanded by Major General Frank Heath Simmons. His forces consisted of elements of the 1st Malaya Infantry Brigade and the Straits Settlement Volunteer Force Brigade with the Indian 12th Infantry Brigade in reserve. From 3 February, the Allies were shelled by Japanese artillery and air attacks on Singapore intensified over the next five days. The artillery and air bombardment strengthened, severely disrupting communications between Allied units and the commanders and affecting preparations for the defense of the island. From aerial reconnaissance, scouts, infiltrators and high ground across the straits, such as at Istana Bucket Serene and the Sultan of Johor's Palace, the Japanese commander, General Tomoyuki Yamashita, and his staff gained excellent knowledge of the Allied positions. Yamashita and his officers stationed themselves at Istana Bukit Serene and the Johor State Secretariat Building, the Sultan Ibrahim Building, to plan for the invasion of Singapore. Although advised by his top military personnel that Istana Bukit Serene was an easy target, Yamashita was confident that the British army would not attack the palace because it was belonged to the Sultan of Johor. Yamashita's prediction was correct and despite being observed by Australian artillery they were denied permission to engage the palace by their commanding general, Bennett. It is a commonly repeated misconception that Singapore's famous large-caliber coastal guns were ineffective against the Japanese because they were designed to face south to defend the harbor against naval attack and could not be turned round to face north. In fact, most of the guns could be turned and were indeed fired at the invaders. However, the guns, which included one battery of 315 in weapons and one with 215 in guns, were supplied mostly with armor-piercing shells and few high-explosive shells. Ab shells were designed to penetrate the hulls of heavily armored warships and were mostly ineffective against infantry targets. Military analysts later estimated that if the guns had been well supplied with he shells the Japanese attackers would have suffered heavy casualties, but the invasion would not have been prevented by this means alone. Percival incorrectly guessed the Japanese would land forces on the northeast side of Singapore, ignoring advice that the northwest was a more likely direction of attack. This was encouraged by the deliberate movement of enemy troops in this sector to deceive the British, as such a large portion of defence equipment and resources had been incorrectly allocated to the northeast sector, where the most complete and freshest formation, the British 18th Division, was deployed, while the incomplete Australian 8th Division sector with just two brigades had no serious fixed defensive works or obstacles. To compound matters, Percival had ordered the Australians to defend forward so as to cover the waterway, yet this meant they were immediately fully committed to any fighting, limiting their flexibility, whilst also reducing their defensive depth. The two Australian brigades were subsequently allocated a very wide frontage of over 18 kilometres and were separated by the Kranji River. Yamashita had just over 30,000 men from three divisions. The Imperial Guards Division under Lieutenant General Takuma Nishimura, 
the 5th Division under Lieutenant General Takuro Matsui and the 18th Division under Lieutenant General Renyamu Taguchi. Also in support was a light tank brigade. In comparison, following the withdrawal Percival had about 85,000 men at his disposal, although 15,000 were administrative personnel. While large numbers were semi-trained British, Indian and Australian reinforcements that had only recently arrived. Meanwhile, of those forces that had seen action during the previous fighting the majority of units were under strength and under-equipped. In the days leading up to the Japanese attack, patrols from the Australian 22nd Brigade were sent across the strait to Johor at night to gather intelligence. Three small patrols were sent on the evening of 6 February. One was spotted and withdrew after its leader was killed and the boat sunk while two others managed to get ashore. Over the course of a day, they found large concentrations of troops, although they were unable to locate in any landing craft. The Australians requested the shelling of these positions to disrupt the Japanese preparations, but the patrol reports were later ignored by Malaya commanders being insignificant, believing that the real assault would come in the northeastern sector, not the northwest.